Hello and welcome back to our HIP New World Order campaign. In our last episode, we were granted victory in the Crusade for Al-Andalus, so we have gained the entire Kingdom of Al-Andalus along with a bit of extra land, the Kingdoms of Portugal and Castile, apparently. So that is nice. However, I kind of screwed up giving away the Kingdom title to our daughter here, so I had to go through and do a lot of vassal transferage off camera between episodes, so everything is fixed now. We do have all of the du jour land, I think, underneath Al-Andalus, or at least as much as we control, along with some up here, which I guess she got as well. And we have also ended up with a few Muslim vassals as well, which we aren't able to transfer to her because they're not du jour part of the kingdom. So I'm not sure really what to do with these guys. I guess we could improve their opinion to the point where we can make them convert. Uh, at least with that guy we'll be able to do it. However, they have got us over our vassal limit here, which is perhaps a little bit of a problem. We could create another vassal kingdom, of course. This guy, I think, is unlikely to ever like me enough to convert because he's zealous. So maybe we'll just grant him independence and let him uh, fend for himself in between all of the Aztecs and Christian kingdoms here. I'm sure he won't last too long. So that will get us down to 36 of 35. Apparently have a couple of holdings in here for some reason. Guess we could grant these guys independence as well. We could have transferred the vassalage to the rightful liege. I'm just going to grant them independence though. I don't really want to hold on to holdings outside of my du jour land here. Let's see how we can find this guy. Right, I think that's it. that takes care of those. And as for these two guys in here, or three that are directly under me, I suppose. No, he's not. Not sure why his oh, there's a subholding that's independent. I see. Um, I think we'll just grant these guys independence as well. It's not du jour part of Al-Andalus, so maybe we don't really deserve to keep it. And this will probably be the surest way to get us below our vassal limit. Gets us to 34. And again, we have a little subholding in here, which is not counting towards our vassal limit, but it is counting against my sense of neatness, so if we can... Oh, he's not our direct vassal, so we can't grant him independence. He's under the Duke of Cordoba, who is under Al-Andalus. Well, that's fine. We will just leave it like it is. So, because she's still our vassal here, we can happily disband our troops in this land. Apart from our retinues, of course. We'll land our boats and disband them as well. We are still involved in the... Well, that's interesting. Let's deal with you in a second. Uh, I'm still involved in the war between Jerusalem and Epirus. Which uh, seems to be going relatively well for Jerusalem. They're still unopposed over there. And no sign of any substantial armies from Epirus, as far as I can see. Though we might not necessarily be able to see them. But anyway, the Aztecs have declared war on us. Apparently our armies shall meet on the field of battle. Okay, what is this over? Uh, Portugal, okay. So just the land up here, I suppose. Well... I guess I don't actually mind too much uh, if he takes that land, but... Hmm, maybe we should put up some kind of a fight. Still has 132,000 troops. I'm actually not sure it's really worth our time to try and fight him. I'm sure we'll get a nice amount of gold if we were to able if we were able to beat him. Uh, not that much. And we don't lose much for surrendering, so I think we might just surrender it. Hopefully he'll declare on a few other people in the meantime and whittle down his available troops so we can take him a bit more easily next time. 
We lose 100, 100 piety, 50 prestige, neither of which is a big deal. Catholicism loses a little moral authority. And we lose some land, which I frankly did not even want that much in the first place, since it's all marooned off on its own there. So, sure. We'll concede to this first battle here. Really, we're just lulling him into a false sense of security, so the next time when we actually fight him, he will not be prepared. Hey, we'll get all our troops disbanded, though, and I think we're soon going to be out of our Holy War cooldown. Actually, it's going to be two years. So it'll be a little while before we can expand uh, the Kingdom of Antioch over here any further. In the meantime, I guess we could fight a quick war against Venice for some more of our du jour land over here, which I guess is just this one county, two counties. They're in separate duchies though, so unfortunately we'll have to do them one county at a time, I think. Which is okay, I guess we are going to have to do it at some point, so we might as well. We do our Dijur claim on Aquilia. Or we could press a claim on the entire uh, Duchy of Venice, actually. I don't think we really want to do. I'm happy enough to leave them independent and just take the land that we rightfully deserve via our Dijur claims. So we'll take this county first. Should be able to win this without too much trouble and without raising all of our armies. He hasn't got that many troops. So we'll raise some from the immediate area. Well, he seems to be not that many, but... Hopefully that will be enough. We'll get our retinue marching in this direction over land as well. It doesn't really seem like the optimal route. Why go through the mountains when you could go by the coast? Though I suspect we wouldn't be suffering much in the way of attrition anyway, but we'll go by the coast just in case. Hey, our daughter is changing crown laws. And our spymaster is still in Barcelona, which is now actually... Oh, it's not part of our realm, that's up here in Aragon, okay. Thought we were stealing technology from ourselves for a second there, but... That is not the case, but we did gain some technology nonetheless. Which is good. And again. So I would really like to do something about our unpleasant borders in this area. We did inherit Flanders or somehow accidentally vassalize them at some point, so in gaining all of their land we gained a lot of territory that's not du jour part of the HRE. Made things a bit messy over here. And I guess, uh, is Flanders not even an actual kingdom? Is it just titular? It is a titular title, okay. Hmm. I'm not sure what we should really do about that. I guess we could just conquer France and Burgundy, add them to the empire. They would drift into the Empire, I guess, in due course. Anyway, the um, Aztecs have declared the subjugation of Earl Wolfmar of Huntingdon here, who actually has a lot of land to his name. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Oh, he's uh, this guy in here. So 
So it looks like they are attempting to expand their holdings in Britain. Which is fine. Um, Jerusalem is up to 70% in their war here. Actually have... Well, they don't quite have all of their war goals sieged up there, but... Probably by the time they do, that'll get them to 100. Like, there hasn't been much resistance, if any, from Epirus. Some counties converted, not sure where exactly. Uh, I guess we have Antioch almost entirely converted, or actually all of the land that we have in Antioch converted, so that's good. We can move our chaplain over to Andalusia here. Put him in the capital to start with. My husband is again asking me for a fief of his own to govern. He actually doesn't like me that much. Because we've denied him a title a lot. Well, let's do the same thing again. We'll give him a gift. Buy himself something shiny. As you've increased your efforts in trying to gain wealth, the amount of hours you spend sleeping has decreased because sleeping is not a profitable behavior. They must have more gold, so we gain the trait stressed, unfortunately. Maybe we've held on to our business focus for a little too long here. Maybe we'll switch to something else. We are getting on in years now, so maybe we don't want to do something like hunting or war. Maybe we could dive, or, uh, devote ourselves to scholarship in our twilight years. That might be nice and relaxing. Retire to the library. Okay, so Jerusalem has ended their war. They've taken the Duchy of Limassol. Give them some more land in this area. Alright, so we have our army all assembled over here. Probably has been ready for a while and I have been neglecting it, but that's fine. Um, our retinue is on the way up as well, that's also good. Aztecs are building cities in Cornwall, okay. Um, I guess we'll actually march directly on Venice here. I think we'll probably be crossing a river, but that's okay. Aztecs inheriting a duchy. So this isn't going as well as one might have hoped here. Princess Damiana's justice has brought peace to a troubled province. Fewer crimes are committed and fewer complaints are heard in the province. The peasants have never been happier. So our daughter Damiana is doing a good job. Good for her. Uh, I think we should probably still win this, but... Yeah, we're going to break the center, I think, but they've got a good defensive position here, and we neglected to appoint leaders to two of our flanks, which certainly hasn't helped us. And the Aztecs have indeed won their war up in Britain. They didn't take all of the land. They are expanding. And I'm actually beginning to think this might be a loss. We don't improve things pretty quickly here. Uh, maybe we'll just about pull it out. Nope, we won't. Oh, our husband died of severe stress at the age of 63. That is unfortunate. Well, I suppose we can get married again and we don't have to worry about having any more children. Not that we have any problems with having more children, I suppose, but... 
Um, we can marry whoever we want. Uh, matrilineally, of course. Again, not that it matters because we have plenty of children, but I think it would be beneath our dignity to marry non-matrilineally. And what do we think? Like a nice, strong 18-year-old to uh, keep us company in our old age? Maybe a tall, quick 17-year-old? Maybe we should go for somebody with high diplomacy to help out with our vassal limit. Might be actually a better idea. A very good character here. He is chaste. Not that that matters too much to us, I suppose. Sure. We'll marry young Radislav here. Alright, so this battle is going to be a loss, which is a bad start in this war, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference long term. So we have temporarily gone over our vassal limit and we are lacking a chancellor. But once Radislav arrives, he can probably fix both of those problems. Okay, the Duke of East Anglia is being subjugated by the Aztecs. Okay, we are now married to Radislav. Shame about his haircut, but I'm sure he's a very nice young man. And that has fixed our vassal limit problem, but hasn't actually improved the situation. That's fine though. And actually, Radislav is not even the best person for the Chancellor job, so we'll appoint this Duke instead. And we'll see where he needs to be sent, if anywhere. Um, our King of Schwaben is not too happy with us, but he is still only nine years old and we are educating him, so he'll come around eventually, I'm sure. I guess this Duke is probably our highest priority. Uh, we don't really have any serious problems to worry about here, I think. At least not yet. Alright, so it seems to be some other Venetian army here. And I apparently only ordered my retinue to go that far, so... Let's see. Arrive in Padua on the 30th. We will actually get it in time, so that's good. We can hopefully rendezvous with our retinue over here somewhere. And the follow-up battle will presumably go better. I don't feel too well, something is wrong with me, I am burning up with fever, my nose is running and my head feels as if someone is banging something hard against it. But we are ill as well as stressed. This doesn't bode well for our life expectancy. Uh, fortunately, we do have a good character lined up, so lead the succession will be relatively smooth. Okay, there's another fairly large Venetian army over here, so we might want to think about raising a few more levies to deal with this. We have a 2,000 or so available here. Okay. If we get these into the mountains in our war goal here, we already raised these. How about up here? Go a bit further afield. Okay. This should add up to plenty, I think. In fact, let's not actually be quite that um, reckless there. We'll make them meet up pretty far away so that we don't have any chance of losing any more battles there, though I think we're... Yeah, we're probably not going to get here in time to reinforce this, though we do have a river crossing on our side. We can try, let's get uh, an organizer in charge, assuming we have one. Really should have taken the opportunity to appoint some characters to this army, but that's okay. Let's see how long they hold out. We've lost the center, and I think the reinforcements might actually get there in time. Ride like the wind, Grand Mare. 
be in there on the 15th, so just in time to reinforce. Their right flank is broken. They are not reinforcing with this other army, so I think we're in the clear. Okay, somebody's been called in, that's fine. We did win the battle. Everyone just stay here and merge up, please. And I think we should be okay to attack them in the plains here, though it is over a river, I think. In fact, maybe we'll just play it very safe and wait until we have more morale before we go in and attack them. These guys, I think, though, will be safe enough to actually get into the war goal at this point. But we're going to have to continue this war in the next episode because we're out of time for now, so thanks for watching, and join me again then.